outstanding. Apparently, we are now live. So, good morning. Welcome to today's RC Coffee Chat. Now, this is the uh, live episode. Now, if you're watching this in the recorded version, uh, there isn't a live chat which goes this. But if you do have any questions, remember you can ask underneath this video. And if you are in the live chat, look out for the live chat on the left hand side and pop that on the screen because we've been here chatting already in the background. Now on to today's topics we have, let's get this right, uh, get the list right. Uh, this episode is actually dedicated to Ricky. Ricky, you know who you are, so I hope you've got your cuppa to hand and I hope these episodes generally help you in, you know what I mean. Onto the key topics for today. Uh, a new glue has been found. A special glue. A limited edition as well. <laughs> uh, as a heads up, the wife is now in the Facebook group. We'll get onto that in a few moments. Uh, we're going to be looking at a strobe light, uh, some four. Oh, <laughs> those propellers turn up. I've got a big sack of them. Crazy stuff. Uh, we have, oh yes, yesterday, a uh, big topic for yesterday is to do with the clouds, which you can see over there. We will take a few moments to have a look around the clouds as well. And uh, just a daft one, can you hear me nice and loud? Uh, if you can let me know in the chat, that would be fantastic, please. Uh, the next topic is, it is Wombat Maiden Day. So we'll be discussing a little bit about the Wombat uh, and... Yes, by the looks of it, uh, and oh yeah, shameless plug for the Facebook group and also to remember to subscribe as well. So let's go back to topic number one. A new glue has been found and it's called Yoohoo Poor Piss. Uh, and the reason why I've named it Yoohoo Poor Piss uh, is in short because it goes yellow when it reacts with the sunlight. <laughs> so I was there doing the clouds with Yoohoo Poor. It just seemed like the most appropriate glue uh, to glue the uh, clouds together and plus I had three tubes of it here so that is what I went on and used. Uh, do note with the clouds EPO foam the E6000 and also Goop Glue melts the foam so do need to go very very careful with that and thank you for letting us know that it's all working. Good morning and uh, Millers, Paul, Olin, Mark as well and by the way I'll stick your chat if I can up there in the background so we can still use it. Brilliant. Uh, so a new glue has been found, uh, it's slightly modded uh, on there as well. So next topic is, oh yeah, we need a little heads up. The wife is now in the Facebook group. <laughs> it was an interesting conversation with Andrew yesterday. Should we let her in? Should we not? <laughs> uh, I've got nothing to hide in short and I'll, I'll poop. I've lost the uh, post now. Scroll down, see if we can find it, yeah. Uh, so she was here working away on the clouds yesterday for a while. That is one of the fins. We're going with black fins as well. As you can see, she's made a fantastic job of it. Uh, yeah, really, really nice. Just needs a slight trim up. Uh, and we are going for black fins at the rear. I did actually want to uh, make the wingtips black as well. But I've been and run out of uh, black covering film. So I'll have to stick that in an order on Hobby King of all places. So... Happy days on that front. Uh, so we're slowly chipping away. And again, it was a busy day. We'll, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, something which I've recently ordered is I've been in order some of these. And there's links to these in the video description. Um, I don't know if they're any good at all or not. In fact, I'll pop a link in the chat uh, for these. <sighs> I don't know, it's kind of like 50-50. I really like the Flytron strobe lights, you know, these little V2 ones, little bubbles. I've still got two here. Um, I'm gonna stick at least one on the Phantom FX61. Um, but they are like seven quid all in, uh, when you especially when you include the little dome bubbles. So I've bought a couple of these to see if they're any good. If anybody else has used them, do let us know in the uh, chat. Uh, so yeah, curious on that one. Uh, oh, 400 propellers. Now, I'll, again, I'll pop a link into this one. We were very unsure uh, if we were going to get 400 propellers or not. Um, and I said 100 just to play on the safe side when I did that video a couple of days back on YouTube. Uh, knowing in the back of my mind, at best, you would receive 200. But in reality, 
Are you ready for this? I have just been and received a lifetime supply of propellers. I kid you not, this bag weighs about 1.5 kilos, I reckon, and it's full of propellers. In fact, I'll do a proper run video on these later. I'll see if I can get in here. Let's see if we can get some out. <laughs> it's just rammed full with propellers. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> yeah, they are just standard. Well, I bought 60, 40 propellers. Oh, and even got the little arrows on it. I don't know how well that's going to come out on the camera. Come on, focus, you. Come on, focus. Don't know if you can see that. There's a little arrow on that, so you know which way the orientation is supposed to be. Uh, I, look, I, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll break one of the 400, so we, I'll only have 399 left to see how flexible these things are. So... They'll be fine. Absolutely fine. For nine dollars well nine dollars ninety-nine, I think I paid about six pounds sixty-six for four hundred propellers. In fact, I've got to pause to get the calculator out to work out how much I paid for them. Six pounds sixty-six divided by four hundred. Oh, I mashed that up, didn't I? Nothing quite like doing this live, is there? And I've done that wrong again. Six pounds sixty-six divided by four hundred equals uh, yeah, 1.6 pence per propeller. <laughs> On earth. Crazy stuff. Now, I'm just having a quick look at your comments here in the background. Let's pause to take a quick note. Uh, yeah, withdrawal from the cold. It is burr out there this morning. Um, yesterday, you were referring to Fixed Wing Friday episode for, fr uh, for yesterday or an earlier episode. Yes, James, that was uh, so wrong. Uh, from down in New Zealand, uh, Fuxed Wing Friday. Absolutely hilarious. You should go and take a nose at that. Uh, Paulo, um, oh, hi from Portugal. Hello. I certainly hope it's a lot warmer down there than what it is up here with me. Uh, Mark, she's doing the woodwork though. Uh, woodwork too. No, it's just me. And it's really straightforward. Um, Olin says, you've got to do in all your building, and now she's in the group. It's only fair that she gets landed with a few herself. She's not really interested in flying, but she does like building models. She, she doesn't like the um, covering, which for me is a massive bonus. Uh, it really is. Uh, Matthew says, Matt, do some videos with your 3D printer, please, mate. I really do need to get around to making that episode. It is in the episode list to do. Um, and I do have some antenna aerials to print off as well. Now, there are positive sides and negative sides to 3D printing. Um, Matthew, I'm going gonna, gonna, like, to give you like this heads up straight away, is that it is proper better, it's probably better value uh, for you to just buy the parts pre-made uh, or pre-printed uh, because the 3D printers are not cheap by any stretch of imagination. Uh, they are a pain in the rear to calibrate and things like that. Uh, but they are pretty damn cool, and you can print anything you want, whenever you want. Um, but they are also quite noisy too. So there are a lot of negative effects, and I want to do like a ni nice, decent, all-round uh, episode on that one. Uh, can you please check the balance of the props in a later episode? I am just having a quick look around my desk. I can't see my prop balancer. Uh, I can tell you they probably won't be very well balanced. Um, I know that when I used to put those similar props uh, on the back of the Sky Shadow, uh, is that I just had to get the Dremel out and balance them up. But hey-ho, for one pence, worst case, well, 1.6 pence each, it's like a case you just stick them on the model and off you go. And if you hit some, who cares? <laughs> you know? Uh, Boris, hello, has from, oh, sorry, Guten Tag uh, from Germany. Uh, the fam's, the, yeah, the fam's flies together. Happy days. Right. Let's move that off and get on to our next topic. Oh, our next topic. I'm going to pop this link to Joshua Bardwell. Very, very smart guy. I'll put a link to his video uh, in, the, uh, in the chat and I'll also put it in the video description. So if you're watching the recorded version, uh, it will be down in the video description for you. Uh, basically, this is Joshua explaining the difference between standard gimbals on a Tyrannus to Hall Effect ones. Now, I'll give you the very short version, which is that on standard gimbals, 
uh, is that you have a conductive layer on the back of the gimbal. So you imagine when you move the stick left and right, the resistant cha resistance changes. So if you're in the middle, as I say, no resistance. And when you go out to the left, it gets higher. And when you go out to the right, it gets higher and you knows which ways you've gone. The issue with that is that it's a mechanical process, as in that over time, that strip wears out. Uh, and Joshua's found in his experience that those only last about a year. Now, why is Joshua excited? Is because he's excited because FR Sky have been and released um, Hall Effect gimbals. Now, why should you be? Uh, excited about Hall Effect gimbals is because it is contactless. Basically, you are moving a magnet around an inductor, uh, thus you get the Hall Effect. So there is no physical connection. So that line we're put in the ones which I've got in my Tyrannus right now is going to wear out over time with my abuse. Uh, is that with the Hall Effect, you're kind of just down to either dirt getting in there, which shouldn't happen. Uh, or the bearings given out, which should last for a very, very, very long time. So do go and watch um, that episode from Joshua. He does explain it in far more detail, detail than that. Joshua has been to put two links to two, uh, one American site, an international one. And I also did spot uh, they did come out on Banggood as well. And I'll pop a link to that. Uh, in the live chat, which is going to here in the background. Remember that will be in the comment section as well. I am going go. I am going to go and grab a pair of these myself. I don't see them as being a tricky task of taking the couple of screws out the back of the Tyrannus. Just going careful and making sure we like take a photograph on our phone just to make sure everything's in the right place, uh, and then plugging them in. It should be a very very straightforward mod for my Tyrannus. So for twenty two dollars, we'll say 18 quid 36 quid something like that hall effect brilliant so that is a mod which i will be making to my tyrannus at some point in the future now on to the next topic which is all about the clouds now i am going to be 100 percent honest with you is that there are a lot of things about this model which i'm not liking okay um it was the model which you voted and I am actually keeping a detailed list of all the stuff which I do not like about this model. Now, I do need to put this into perspective, which is this isn't your typical model and you probably won't be the typical pilot which is buying a model like this. So it's definitely not going to be your first rodeo uh, when it comes to building a model. And that's my point. This isn't my first rodeo to build in a model and there are many things which I'm not liking the look of, and I've had to tweak and improve for my own abuses. So I will go through a detailed list of those at a later point, and I've got I've kept a, like a photograph log for them. But what I'd like to do is actually introduce you to her this morning because she is absolutely massive. So let me just put it in to perspective for you. That is how tall this model is. It is absolutely humongous. Now, I'm going to take these wings off, and then we're going to take a nose at the fuselage. My challenge today, actually, uh, before we do actually have a look at the fuselage, and I've kind of worked out the route which I'm going to take, uh, is that the one thing which has really frustrated me is that on the back of this wing uh, is that they have pre-glued in this spar and this top piece of plastic, and this is not glued in there very well. I have had to go down. You probably won't see the marks on here, and I've gone, I've run CA in there, and also there's still been some gaps, and I've just injected some hot glue at specific points all the way along that joint. I'm really not impressed that they glued that in at all, and also I'm not 100% about their gluing for this end piece either. Um, but like I said, I'll run for a full list of things which I'm not that happy about. But as many of you know that I am one of the most paranoid pilots in the world and I do run my video transmitter and receiver out on the wings. But we, as we just saw, that wingspan is absolutely epic. So, and we also need to run the cables through the wings into the fuselage. Now, I've got, if anybody can see a better way of doing this, but what I was thinking about it last night and I think I've come up with like the better route uh, which is that I'm going to create, uh, well, I've already done half the wiring looms, uh, is create a wiring loom to go all the way down to the wingtip, then carry on to go into the fuselage of the model. But this last piece, I will need to feed it down through the hole for the model, for the wing to get it out into the center of the fuselage. 
Now, what I'm actually thinking is taking a cocktail stick, putting some heat shrink tubing over it, so it's got the support all the way along the wire, and then it means then on the flight line, I can just push it down through the wing, and that should make things really, really simple. And of course, once we've landed, and it's time for packing up, I can then pull it back out very easily, uh, and then fold it up, and maybe use just a little bit of Velcro on the back of the wing, just to secure it safely. So that is the uh, approach which I'm gonna go, I, I've, I'm, yeah, I've already decided that that's the route which I'm taking with. It's very simple, and it should be very, very effective, and it also gets over the challenge of trying to, again, I don't know how well you're gonna see that, how well you can uh, get like free plugs in there because you'll need, because you've got four wires going to the video transmitter or the receiver, and then you've also got a servo line in there, that does mean that we need free plugs in there. Now you could potentially use a 3S or 4S balance lead, but I'll be perfectly honest with you, my, uh, what as I've found with the fat shot goggles, the little balance lead connectors over a period of time do they don't like they don't really withstand to repetitive or like uh, usage so the server connectors i've never had an issue with one of those so i'm going to be going with that approach uh, instead if we take a look at the fuselage so as you'll see we've already been and got the motors on let me turn that around so you can see it it's absolutely huge uh, i will be running this with 11 by 7 propellers uh, those are Sunny Sky 2814-900kV motors. And yes, I do know that the chances are that the propellers will hit the ground. That's why I'll set this model up for brake to be enabled on the ESC. Uh, if I take the lid off, I was not happy with how bendy the lid is. So as many of you probably saw in the Facebook group yesterday, I've been in fiberglass up underneath there. So I bought some 40 gram um, glass fiber, uh, I think I just bought it off eBay to be honest, super cheap, uh, I've got so much it'll last me a lifetime, uh, and just put some epoxy in there on the top, and I went really, really careful, uh, and kept it well away from the edges, and now that is super stiff, uh, which is perfect, which is, because that's the hatch which is gonna come on and off all the time. Then in the fuselage, I don't know how well you're gonna see this on the camera, but let me just rotate that around so you can see what's going on in there. So originally I put a floor in on the bottom and that really is whiting out that camera. I can see the um, thing on the top. I mean, so I can catch the light a different way. Anyway, right. I did put a floor in there to begin with. Uh, the, there was a piece of wood which I've added on the front because I was really worried about the bolts over time compressing uh, and crushing the foam and not giving us uh, a good enough fixing for the lid. Uh, and I know this model isn't gonna be aerobatic, but still, coming in heavy on a landing, uh, you wanna make sure that everything stays in one piece as best it can. Uh, best it can. Uh, I've also been and put plates in either, uh, 1.5 millimeter plates in either side. Now that does mean that I now have maximum options. If I wanted to put a little mezzanine layer inside, I could do. I'll just build up little um, legs either side and then I can put my own little plywood uh, plate in there. And then here at the back, I am gonna make a little wooden uh, uh, free mill plywood, a little uh, board in there for the vector to go in and sit on, uh, and I can run all the cable really neatly and tidily in there. Now for the FPV camera, this part has been bugging me a bit, and I've decided to go for a two-pronged approach. Uh, I am gonna get this, I'm gonna set this up so I can run the run cam in the nose and an FPV camera on the top. I'm gonna to stay with simple to begin with. But the more I think about it, the more I'm thinking, well, if I did have access, again, assuming the Eagle Tree Vector, uh, Eagle Tree Systems allow us to use those auxiliary ports, and if they don't, I'll use one of the uh, S-Bus to PW, PWM converters, is that we do have this hatch back here. Now, how cool would it be is that if we had a pan and tilt up back up here at the back of the model, and then we had a, um, I'm sure we can buy these, I'm 100% sure I've seen them bang good, where you could change the FPV camera using a, maybe a switch uh, on the Tyrannus, and then you could switch the view from this camera on the nose to the camera on the back. And of course, if that's set up with a 180 degree servo that you could pan all the way around, when you're up and flying, 
but for taking off and landing you add the dedicated camera on the nose where you get maximum like view in the goggles so that you can fly normally if that makes sense so that's how far i've got um, but she is now glued together she does need to hit lamination today if i have time so that brings us nicely onto our next topic and i will just take a moment to have a look at your comments so let me put her out over here out the way there we go brilliant uh Nabila says, Tyrannus Gimbal ordered. I am very jealous. Happy days, man. Um, Adrian, good morning. Uh, Wolfgang, good morning. Uh, Stu, morning. I should be flying right now, uh, but I'm at home watching you. What are you doing here, Stu? This is recorded. Get out and get flying. If the weather's good, make the most of it. That's what I say. Um, uh, Van says, morning, Matt. Can you pick up on the topic of flying sites? It would be nice, nice if people fly, uh, sh share good spots to fly uh fan if you actually look up on google and look up slope soaring sites uh there is a epic great big map of all the slope soaring sites uh in the united kingdom uh, and also if you look on the bmf uh bmfa website in the united kingdom uh there is a club finder and most clubs are actually very friendly and if you want to go somewhere and say look i'm coming down uh, on holiday or whatever reason is all right if I come down and chuck a model around for half an hour or an hour or something like that. They are normally really, really cool. And plus, you get to see a whole new range of models and meet some really cool people. So keep that really, really straightforward. Uh, Mark, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, Washington, D.C. Uh, James Sands, will a pair of Tony G. Aerojive 63? Probably. <laughs> Uh, James probably uh, the the motives which I use James for the clouds were the ones which I saw uh, they are proven uh, combination which people which were using on the MTD uh, those motors were not cheap they were $28 each and then add propellers in on top uh, and of course an ESC each for them uh, personally I would suggest uh, using the sunny sky uh, X2814 motors. They are absolutely huge uh, and they were the suggestions for another proven platform uh, which was the MTD. Uh, so that's what I would suggest for you, uh, James. So let's move the chat on so that we can move on to the last topic for today, which is... She is almost ready. To be flown. I'd still need to put the other XT, XT60 connector and do the little mini wiring loom for the FPV camera and the video transmitter. But for all intents and purposes, she is now ready to be maidened. Uh, that's what I'm going to go off in a few moments' time and go and spank the wombat around the sky uh, later this morning. Now, a couple of days on, these wings are stupidly rigid. Uh, the lamination, the, the combination of the too much carbon fiber, which I put in there, uh, the too much goop glue, which I also put in there, the, the, the paint and the laminate has really stiffened this model up. It is r super, uh, super rigid. Um, it does look semi matte proof. So we will have her maiden today uh, and I will keep you updated in the Facebook group as and when I can or when uh, as and when applicable. Um, should be absolutely fantastic. I will just go over and quickly check the C of G again. Uh, and as you know, with all my models, I will ensure by hook or by crook or by lead, uh, I will make sure this model is nose heavy, at least for a maiden. Um, if you are in any doubt about a model, always stick lead in the nose to make sure that, yeah, that's, that's nose heavy. Not like ridiculously nose heavy, but enough nose heavy so that uh, if, if the C of G point is off, that it's still nose heavy, uh, so it's quite flyable. Uh, if you find yourself having to put loads and loads of up trim in it because it's just wanting to dive towards the grain all the time, uh, you know that you've perhaps got too much lead in the nose and you can very quickly land it because the opposite to that is a tail heavy model and tail heavy models are absolutely wild in the sky. So if in any doubt ever, nose heavy without question and if you're in any doubt at all pop some lead in the nose and you can't go wrong and one of the best examples of that 
uh, was the FMS Edge 540 over there. I put quite a fair chunk of lead up underneath that nose and it was just dipping forwards a touch uh, when I balanced array and I did take the time to exactly measure the CFG point. And the irony is I had that CG point absolutely perfectly correct. I literally mean it when you uh, fly the wrench, absolutely brilliant, uh, no bad habits or anything like that. And then when you flicked her inverted, literally over the course of say 200, 100, 200 meters is that she would just slowly sink down. Uh, and I was the tiniest, I mean like the tiniest little bit of uh, down in her just to get her straight. Oh, crazy. Uh, yeah, Jake, I cannot wait to see the maiden footage either. And I'm going to be the person there on the flight line recording it. I am really, really looking forward to that flying that one. It has come out so much better than I imagined. And of course, um, I know that yesterday I was mucking around with the clouds. And by the way, yesterday was a work day here and I spent the vast majority of the day working. Um, but we did manage to chip away at the clouds. Uh, the next model, which I need to focus my attention on, is the 48 Flying Wing from Team Legit. Really looking forward to flying that one. It is just a huge, great big flying wing. Uh, and I am getting some custom decals uh, printed out uh, very, very shortly for that one as well. So it is going to look absolutely uh, amazing. I can't wait for that one. So on that note, I'm going to quickly recap what we've been uncovered today and then it's time for me to go. I've got a shed load to work to get done this morning and I also need to get the, the Wombat sorted so we can get a Maiden today. So in summary, a new glue has been found. It's called Yoohoo Poor Piss. Real glue, honest. It's right here on my desk. See, look, I even took a photograph of it as well. Uh, as a quick look, oh yeah, a little heads up, the wife is in the Facebook group now. Um, she's ace. And again, I've got nothing to hide. And this thing, I'd, I want to get into the topic of getting models past your wife in the future. Um, but my approach to most things is just tell her straight, I've bought a new model. Uh, and then, by the way, if you do have a model which is leaving you for whatever reason, is to always make a big fuss of it. Uh, over a good couple of days like oh, I'm thinking about selling this one or Martin or one of your mates has been and said or oh, he'd like to buy that one and then you can have the conversation with your wife well it flies really well but he is my mate and things like that drag it over a week and there, there's several, several very straightforward things which you can do uh, we had the strobe light which I've got no idea what that's going to be like but I've ordered them they are on the way to me already the propellers have turned <laughs> That many propellers has been in turned up. <laughs> it's just an obscene amount of props. Just absolutely obscene. Uh, Hall effect gimbals. I will be buying a pair for myself and my Tyrannus. Uh, I don't see it as being a complicated mod. mod. What is it going to be? A couple of screws on the back, a couple of screws on the front. Stuff a wire in. Jobs are good in. Stick it back together without trapping any cables. Happy days. And then yesterday was, uh, like I said, it was a work day, but I did manage to chip away at the clouds. Uh, also note, there are quite a few things which I'm not particularly liking about the clouds, and I have had to go on and modify that model quite heavily. And like I said, I will, I, I sorry, I am um, keeping tabs on this in a quite a long list, uh, but I will reserve final judgment until she flies. Um, and I also have to be brutally honest here is that if you do like the look of the clouds and uh, you were 50-50 on buying one uh, and you do not have a mini talon is that I would actually suggest you go and buy a mini talon. Brutally honest, it's 50 quid, okay? Much, much better value for money. Um, but then that said, if you do like the twin booms on it, you do like the look of it, just be, just be giving me giving you some advance notice. You better be prepared to do a little bit of extra work on it, um, to say the least. And then the last topic for today was the Wombat Maiden Day. Need to go and sort out a couple of wires on her. We'll get her up in the sky today. And that's class, that's happy days. So on that note, I'm just quickly checking on here. Um, yep, yeah, reading a few comments. Mini Talon all day. Yeah, Mini Talon's fantastic. That model does like to fly. But by the way, just be aware, the Mini Talon does have a few bad traits as well. 
uh, mainly to, to, to do with lunges uh, and CG point uh, is that, yeah, you really do need to give a lot of welly and the biggest lob going and you like throw it straight you don't throw it with any up on there you always throw it uh, in a straight line to get some airspeed up underneath them uh, as well my wife was listening oh Stu, you better confess to that new model <laughs> we've seen the pictures <laughs> and he's right in the poop now sorry Stu, i had to do that no sorry Stu's wife uh, he hasn't been and bought a new model and he isn't isn't hiding anything from you at all not one iota <laughs> so on that note it's time for me to wrap up thank you ever so much for joining me for today's rc coffee chat like i said today's episode was recorded live if you have any questions or comments after this well after we've done the live episode mm, please just pop your question in the comment section underneath this episode if you are not already subscribed remember on the youtube channel which is here somewhere uh, well underneath this video you'll see my name matthew ogborn it'll say subscribe next to that click on subscribe and also if you've not found the facebook group the link to the facebook group is in the video description for you as well and on that note thank you ever so much for joining me today for today's rc coffee chat and i'll see you about the same time tomorrow mm tomorrow morning and on that note for myself matt cheerios <laughs>